The one that confuses me that I find a little bit more difficult is what's called the nodal points. And uh, the nodal point one is if rays come in to the optical system at some angle and hit nodal point one, and nodal point one is where these rays cross the optical axis coming in at some particular angle, they will appear to come out at the same angle from nodal point number two. So think about this ray coming in. If we extend it, it would cross here at nodal point number one. This ray is going to exit the optical system at some and appear to come from nodal point N2 inside the system. In theory, any ray that comes in at an angle and strikes one of these nodal points will leave the system at the same angle from the second nodal point. Now, I've drawn these simple so you can understand the concepts, but certainly uh, the optical system doesn't have to have its principal planes inside the system and its focal points outside the optical system. Uh, for example, let's look at this blue ray coming into side number one. Um, it does something inside the optical system. We don't know what. Uh, may bend and go through 100 lenses in there. We just don't know. But it, when it comes out, it comes in down below the optical axis and crosses the optical axis here at point F2. Here, F2 is outside the optical system as before. But if we calculate the principal plane, H2, we see that, in fact, it is outside of the optical system. And H2, in fact, in this case, is a positive number since it's over on the right-hand side of side number two. Uh, the ray coming in to the output plane of the system drawn in red here comes out and diverges. Let's go ahead and get a red pen so we can be consistent about this. It comes into the optical axis here or into the optical system here, exits at this angle. The focal point in this case lies inside the optical system. You'll notice see if I extend this back, point F1 is inside the optical system, um, and principal plane H1 is also inside the optical system, and it is, in fact, a positive number in this case. And so there's no reason that focal points, principal planes, or nodal points need to lie inside or outside an optical system. Depending on how the system bends rays, they can lie on any, either side or any point on the optical axis. In fact, if rays come out in, at parallel to the optic axis, the, the, the cardinal points can in fact lie at infinity. So why are these things useful? Um, you sort of understand how these can be used to, to draw how a ray would behave in an optical system if you had to do with pencil and paper uh, in the old days. But in fact, it turns out that in many modern optics catalogs, they still give the principal points of lenses. Uh, they may not call them H1, H2, although a lot of catalogs do. Uh, this is a company called Newport, which in the past I've purchased a lot of optics from. This is the website address right here. Um, this happens to be a section on uh, double concave lenses, and these are two of the many different lenses they offer. But if you look at the catalog and look at the diagram that's in it, you'll see that, in fact, they do specify, if you look carefully here, the some of the cardinal points, the focal points of the system, and the principal planes. And so principal planes and, and cardinal points are still used to define lenses. And we'll see how those can be very useful and give you some information for optical system design if you look these up from a catalog. Um, and the reason these are useful is there is a relationship between the cardinal points and the ABCD matrix we studied in the last mini lecture. Um, and remember, although cardinal points describe optical systems in the days before powerful calculations could be done by everybody, they're still very, very useful for describing optical systems. And these are in your book and in your reading assignment, so I'm not going to go in this and give all of them because it would really crowd the page. But in fact, this optical system can either be represented by the cardinal points N1, N2, F1, F2, H1, H2, the six cardinal points, but you can easily and perhaps more simply represent it by the four element ABCD matrix where the ABCD matrix defines the relationship between an input ray and an output ray. It turns out that all the distances in the cardinal points can be defined by a ray matrix. For example, if you take the ray matrix of the system and take the ratio of A over C and take the negative sign of it, it in fact gives you point F2. Um, in this case, point F2 is positive, so uh, a over C is a negative number, since there's a negative sign right there. 1 minus A over C gives you H2, uh, measured in the negative direction from the output plane. And 1 minus D over C gives you the nodal point in 1, again, measured from input plane number 1. Always, this is number 2, and F2 
H2 and N2 would be measured from the output plane or plane number two. F1, H1, and N1 would of course be measured from the input plane or side number one over here. So the point of all of this is that if you know the cardinal points, you can do some simple algebra and calculate the ABCD matrix. If you know the ABCD matrix, you can easily calculate the cardinal points and know how the system behaves in a general sense, at least where the focal length is, where the ray appends, appears to bend, and where a ray coming in and striking a point will exit at a different point going in the same direction at the nodal points. So cardinal points really are very useful to describe the large system behavior of optical systems.